trapezoidal method. Now, this is important because when you guys learn about a trapezoid, and we've kind of discussed this a little bit in class, the area of a trapezoid is area equals 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times height. Right? Yes? No? OK. So we have the same 1 half base 1 times base height. However, if you guys look at this, the way that we're kind of representing these trapezoids here, you guys can see by doing a trapezoid, that's pretty good. Like I only have this little space right here that kind of looks like it's relatively off, right? But everything else looks pretty good. Like the trapezoid method doesn't look like just too bad of a method. You got? Are you okay? You guys good? Yeah. So now the important thing, though, is let's look at how these trapezoids are reframed. So what I want you guys to see is if you take this trapezoid and flip it, this, sorry, we don't really need these here. This is really your delta x, right? So your height, what was typically of like the trapezoid, is now like your delta. delta. And then these is your like f of a. And this would be like your f of b, or it's, you know, x to the a and x to the b. Right? So your heights are dip like so your your base one and base twos are now kind of like your function values. Okay? So I'm going to write this out all the way because this is different than the the left hand, right hand, and the midpoint formulas. So the approximation though is going to be, let's figure out the area for each one of these. Now the area of this one, now this one isn't bad. Again, it's just 1 half. Now let's think about the base. So that's going to be f of 0 plus f of 1 fourth. Um, I'm sorry, base 1 times f. <sighs> and that's your height, which is going to be 1 fourth. f of 0 times f of 1 fourth. And then that's going to be times 1 fourth. Plus, let's do this one. So that's going to be 1 half. We'll do f of 1 fourth plus f of 1 half times, again, this delta x is 1 fourth plus 1 half. Let's do the third one. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the third one is going to be 1 half times f of 1 plus f of 3 fourths times 1 fourth. And I got to squeeze this one in here. Last one is going to be, oops, times, yeah, times 1 fourth. And then this last one is going to be plus 1 half times f of 3 fourths plus f of 1 times 1 fourth. Kind of a lot going on, isn't it? Now, I'm writing all this out so you guys can see, and I will show you guys a simplified, I will show you guys a simplified way to kind of look at this. Now we could go ahead and um, we could go and combine, like we could go ahead and you know factor some things out. Wouldn't you guys agree that they all have the product of one fourth and one half? Yes? Yes. So basically what we could do, if you're looking at this. The 1 half is always going to be constant because that's in the formula of a trapezoid, right? So you're always going to be able to factor out the 1 half. Then you're all also always going to be able to factor out the delta x. As long as it has a uniform, right? As long as you have a uniform delta x, you can factor it out, right? Wouldn't you guys agree? They all have 1 fourth. We're all multiplying by 1 fourth. So I'm going to factor out a 1 fourth. So when I do that, I get this interesting equation, f of 0 plus f of 1 fourth plus f of 1 fourth plus f of 1 half plus f of f of 1 fourth. Wait a minute, what happened here? f of 1 fourth. Did I miss one? Yeah. So that should be f of 1 half. No, f of 1 half plus f of 3 fourths. There we go. I just forgot to write it. f of 1 fourth plus f of 1 half, f of 1 half plus f of 3 fourths. plus f of 3 fourths, plus f of 1. Whew, wow. 
Now, can we combine terms? Could we? Yes. So I'm, I'm writing a lot of this out because I want you guys just to see this. I want you guys to see this pattern. It's the first term plus 2 times every other middle term plus the last term. So this kind of formula you guys are going to want to know or have memorized. Because otherwise, do you guys want to write, do you guys want to, do you want to show your method by writing this all out? No. Nobody wants to spend time doing that, right? Even going down to this is still a lot of writing, right? But if you guys can understand, you always factor out the 1 half. You always factor out the delta x, as long as the delta x is uniform, right? Again, if it's not uniform, you can't factor out the delta x, right? If the difference is like 1 and then 2 and then 5 or something like that, you can't factor that out. It has to be exactly the same. Then the first term is always solo. The other middle terms are 2, 2, 2, and last term solo. Okay? So what I can do is I can immediately just go from here and then just go to this method. And now this isn't as bad. This is 1 eighth. And then let's do f of 0 is just going to be 0. 1 fourth is going to be uh, 1 fourth squared. So f of 1 fourth is going to be 1 sixteenth. So that's going to be. Um, 2 sixteenths, which is 1 eighth. Can I do a little math in my head? Is that OK? Actually, let's just leave it as 2 sixteenths, because we don't know what our common denominator is going to be. Um, that's going to be 2 over 1 fourth, over 2 over 4. That's going to be um, 9, so that's going to be 18 sixteenths. And then that's going to be plus 1. So, oh, I guess I just missed adding one in there, right? No, but I'm saying here's one fourth and there's another one fourth. So I just, I guess I didn't write it in there. Right? I mean, it's there. It's right there and it's right there. I just missed it. Right? Yeah, so I mean, I represented it there because I knew it was there. I just didn't show my work correctly. But are we okay with this? Yes? Why do I square it? Remember, the height is you plug the values into your function to get that. Now, again, we want to get common denominators here. So we have 1 8. We don't really need 0 anymore, right? We can kind of drop that problem. So 2 over 16 multiplied by 4 over 4, that's going to be 8 over 16. That's already in 16, so that's 18 over 16. And then plus 16 over 16. So therefore, we have 10, 28, looks like 44 over 16, 1 8 times 44 over 16. Let's see, we can do that. That'd be uh, 8 goes into there, so it'd be um, 20, 22 over 32. Yes, no, maybe so. Anybody else get that? Bueller, check my work. Right, 8, divide, you can divide a 2 on the top and bottom. Oh, wait, that's times 4. No, I'm sorry, you can divide it 4. Sorry about that. I did do my math wrong. If you take a 4, if you divide a 4 on the top and the bottom, you're going to get 11 over 2. So that would be 11 over 32. All right. And I think that's pretty sure what I remember getting. Yeah, 11 over 32. Okay.